Hello everyone, this is Kenneth Brainy from Cambrotech and welcome back to the channel. So in this series of videos, we are learning Python and this is specifically SNG207, Programming for Engineers, a course taught at the University of Ghana. So if you have been following along, we have this particular structure we have been following. And this has been ordered or put together like the chapters of a book. So currently we are on chapter 18 where we will be discussing Python classes or basically object-oriented programming. So in order to discuss classes, we are going to look at object-oriented programming. Now, I would want you to pay attention over here because there's a concept that applies to a lot of these modern programming languages. So a lot of the things we are saying over here is going to apply to almost every programming language you find around these days. So in this presentation, I'm going to start off with an introduction. Then we are going to look at some code implementation of this object-oriented programming thing I'm now introducing to you. Then we'll look at some conclusions. So we have our introduction over here. Now, I'm saying that object-oriented programming, which you normally refer to as OOP, that's the acronym, is a programming paradigm in which the code used to implement programming logic is based on the concept of objects. So over here, I have some keywords that I've boldened up over here. So the first one, of course, is object-oriented. The next one is a programming paradigm, and we have objects over here. Now let's start with the programming paradigm. What exactly is a programming paradigm? Now, a programming paradigm is basically the methodology in which programming is done. And this object-oriented programming approach it's just one of it now there are several a popular one is what i have over here as the procedural programming and this is all about writing procedures or functions that performs operations on data so far everything we have covered has a resemblance of we writing functions and we doing some operations on data and that's basically procedural programming so i think there's a lot of sense in it because everything is based on a procedure so for instance we are writing a program to calculate the area of a circle we need the parameters we need some data and there's a procedure there's a formula and that's basically what procedural programming is all about now the substance of this lecture is actually on object-oriented programming but just to give you a sneak peek into other programming paradigms that's why i have procedural programming here now we are going to extensively discuss objects but before we do that let's look at the word object oriented so everything is oriented around an object and now there are synonyms to the word orient over here i just checked up on the internet and i find these interesting ones over here so i have align place position or situate so now look at this we can in a more grammatical sense okay object oriented can also mean something like object aligned or object placed or object position or object situated and we are trying to say that this is a programming paradigm in which the code used to implement programming logic is based on a concept of object. So all that we are trying to say is object-oriented programming is almost like everything is positioned around the object. Every programming logic we write will be aligned or will be situated or will be placed around the concept of objects. All right. Now, having said this, now let's look at what these objects are because so far we've said a lot about objects. We don't know what these objects are. And this will introduce us to a particular terminology and that's exactly why we are looking at classes over here so a class is a blueprint for creating objects and i'm saying that the object then becomes an instance of the class so at least we know or we've heard of these objects how do we get these objects these objects are going to be created from classes and this class is now going to be a blueprint so it's going to be like a map a steady guide in which those objects are going to be created now, I have this interesting example over here. And sorry for whetting your appetite. Here we have this bread. So then bread is the object. Now, this bread, whenever you go to the bakery, they have these baking pans they used to create or mold these breads. So now, this baking pan then becomes the template of which the different kinds of breads will be created. So almost every bread that passes through the bakery will probably be molded and put into some baking pan. So this then becomes the template or the blueprint for creating this bread and currently you can see that this bread is over here so in this case the baking pan is a class because it is a template the blueprint for which the object is created and the object then becomes a bread but the most interesting thing over here is that 
We can use the same baking pan to create a tea bread. Well, I'm in Ghana, so we have um, a number of different breads we eat over here. So we can use this baking pan to create a tea bread and use that same baking pan to create a wheat bread. Use that same baking pan on another day to create a sugar bread. Use that same baking pan, wash it on a different month to create coconut bread. Use that same baking pan, wash it after one year to even create a butter bread. Now, if you get this whole concept, then at least we are going to understand some of the usefulness of object-oriented program. And that's what I have over here in this conclusion. So now, object-oriented programming provides a clear structure for our program. So clearly, you could see that whichever bread we wanted to create will have that particular structure. It will not exceed the template for which that baking pan was made. If the baking pan was made in a rectangular shape, that bread is going to come out in a rectangular shape. If that baking pan was made in a circular shape, that bread is going to come out in a circular shape. Now, the next point I have over here is object-oriented programming, which is OOP, makes it possible to create full reusable applications with less code and shorter development time. So you could see that based on the analogy I was making, that we can create reusable applications. We can create reusable bread. Using the same baking pan, we can create a tea bread, wash our pan, then maybe the next week, create butter bread, wash our pan, create coconut bread, and any other bread that we may want to create later on. Now, the last point I have over here is object-oriented programming, which is OOP, helps to keep the Python code, in which case we are learning Python, so I will situate everything around Python, but then basically it applies to every programming language that supports object-oriented programming. So it helps to keep our code dry. And this dry you have over here is an acronym for don't repeat yourself. So now if you are writing code, there's a temptation to repeat yourself and write a lot of things. But then clearly, if there's a way of you not repeating yourself, chances are you are going to limit the number of mistakes you do then there's going to be structure. So this is going to be the end of this presentation. The next thing we are going to look at is writing actual code to implement object-oriented programming. So in here, we still have this note over here. And this I've said over and over again, that a class is a blueprint for creating objects. So in order to create a class and also to follow up with the explanations I gave in the presentation, let's create the baking pan class. So we are going to use the class keyword and we are going to name this baking pan. So over here, you can see that I'm using the Pascal notation. So the baking, the B is capital and the pan over here is also capital. And in most cases, I think the general rule of thumb is for class names, you have to use capital letters for your names. So now I'll do this and put in a colon over here. And whenever we have a colon, I mean, when you press enter, then there's an indentation. This is almost like a function. So whatever thing you write in here will be within the confines or the scope of this baking pan class. Now, Python expects me to write some logic over here. And that's why you see this red underline showing up over here. But for the purpose of this, we are going to use the pass keyword just to tell our system that we'll come back by then for now pass. So everything is looking good. Now, just by doing this, we have created the baking pan class. This has now become the blueprint for which we can create objects. And in order to create objects, it's as simple as that. We want to create a bread. So we define a variable called bread. And this bread is going to be equal to baking pan as we have it this way. Then I'll bring in a parenthesis. So you can see that currently this one returns none. There's nothing being returned over here. So everything is looking good. Now I can proceed to, for instance, print my bread object over here, which is a creation out of this baking pan class. So I'll save this. And now when I run my code, I do get something over here. Now this may look a little bit gibberish, but for now, let me just explain some few things over here. Let me just collapse this so that we have a wider slit in here. Let me pull this up. So when I print bread, in which case this bread you can see that it is a variable of course and it is a creation out of the baking pan class and for which reason this we can also call the objects so now it tells me that whenever i'm printing bread it tells me that 
underscore underscore main underscore underscore dot baking pan object at what you see over here so what you see over here is some memory location for which this bread object was put inside of the computer memory and later on we are going to digest into some of these things very well so creating a class is as simple as what you've done on line two and line three okay and now creating an object is also as simple as what you've done over here but then you would agree with me that we spoke about other ingredients that will go into the bread and for which reason we are going to get a tea bread a sugar bread a butter bread a coconut bread or any other bread we may want to create so those ingredients will come in to give us different flavors and stuff like that and that's exactly what we are going to discuss in the next video now if you find value out of the content i'm putting out over here kindly support my work by subscribing to the Cambro tech channel also don't forget to hit on the notification button so that anytime i release a video you'll be duly notified share this video with friends and family who find this content very useful at Cambro tech we say learn programming you can do it bye bye and catch you in the next video